So it looks like we finally got the catalyst that we needed for some downside on this market. In my opinion, we needed some downside. We were hitting a really tough rejection level up there at 16,000. I talked about this in my previous video, the upside levels that we needed to be aware of before all time highs. That 16,000 level on the NASDAQ was definitely a rough level. Netflix and Tesla earnings gave us the catalyst for some very clean downside today. Now, the downside today, there was one major thing that caused the downside, and I will talk about that in today's video. There was a very clean technical level that you had to be watching and that we talked about live in the pre-market live stream this morning, which caused the confirmation to take downside trades. Today, I took NVIDIA and Meta puts 300% on Meta, a little bit over 100% on NVIDIA. I want to break down why I had the confirmation to go short, watching the NASDAQ futures, and then we will review the trades that I took, taking advantage of the downside today on the market. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, some very clean technical analysis. I hope you really pay attention to the futures part of this video because these trades today on Meta and NVIDIA, it was not important what the individual stocks were doing. What was the most important thing? It is what the NASDAQ did and how important watching futures levels are in your trading. After watching today's video, if you enjoy it, press that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So before we break down these NASDAQ futures after the fact, I want to run a clip from the pre-market live stream this morning so you can see the analysis that is done pre-market. The things that you need to be looking at pre-market, what we do every morning in the pre-market live stream here on YouTube, and what you needed to be looking for on the NASDAQ to spot this rejection. Why don't I want to be long off this level, right? Because I don't want to long into previous day lows and into pre-market high rejections, right? Just because this level is holding does not mean that you're going to get a really nice long off this level, right? Because there's still levels above to be paying attention to. So this is a little bit of a no trade zone for me, right? This is a little bit of a no trade zone for me because I don't really want to be long into this rejection, right? And into this previous day low, right? Because if I'm long right here, you know, maybe you catch a few points, but you're going to expose yourself to this supply rejection, right? The, the pre-market highs and the previous day lows. So guys, now that you saw that in the pre-market live stream, here is how it all played out. And it pretty much played out as expected. You got a morning pop into that supply. You rejected the supply. There was not a single thing more important than to be watching whether the NASDAQ had the strength to break over pre-market highs. What I like to do, which I talk about all the time, is have if-then statements in my trading. If the NASDAQ is below pre-market highs, there is absolutely no reason to be looking long, right? Why am I longing back into pre-market highs? Logically, it does not make sense. You do not need to trade upside back into pre-market highs. The risk reward is not there. Maybe there's a few points to catch, but if you could just think big picture, there is no reason to be trading into pre-market highs. The same way, if the NASDAQ is above pre-market lows, we don't want to be shorting into pre-market lows. Very important to be watching pre-market levels, the high and the low, and previous day levels as well. So we can see here on the NASDAQ, we had pre-market highs at around this 15,905 level. We had previous day lows around this 15,910 level. So we knew, right, coming into today, we were all prepared. The guys that watched the live stream, the guys and girls that watched the live stream, we're not going to long this thing into this pre-market high. We're going to look to see if that rejects. And when we started to see that reject, that is when we started to strike on our positions on Meta, on NVIDIA, right? We started to really see that rejection set in. If we go to the five-minute chart or we can even go down to the two-minute chart, right, we can see what that price action was looking like. So we'll zoom in. We'll zoom into the open, right? And we'll look at that pre-market low rejection. You can see right here, pre-market, I'm sorry, pre-market high rejection, right? Pre-market high right here. You popped into it, right? suckering in all the longs that think that you're going to break through pre-market highs, right? This is the sucker trade. That's the trade that we want to avoid. You have that pre-market high just sitting there. You're starting to see some tired action up near that level. 
as soon as this thing gave up, that is when the strike started to come in, right? That is when you start to strike on your positions with your stop, you can say, over that pre-market high. Now, let's say you watch the QQQ or the SPY, right? It's the same exact things. Here's the QQQ, right? You had a morning pop. This is pre-market high right here, 384.33. You pushed into it, you rejected. Exact same thing. We are not longing into a pre-market high. Here's the SPY, right? The SPY ETF. What did we do this morning? You had a pre-market high right around this uh, 455 level, right? You can see pre-market high right here on the SPY. What did we do? We popped right into that pre-market high and look at where we rejected. We'll go down to the two minute time frame so we can see exactly how that came in. So here's the two minute time frame on the SPY. Here's your pre-market high, right? And look at how perfect that pre-market high rejection was today, right? Futures levels, SPY levels, QQQ levels, it's all crucial to your trading. Just wanted to point that out here today because this is a very valuable and very important thing in your trading. It is most, most important to judge your trades, to guide your trades along these levels on the market. So let's get into Meta. 300% trade to the downside, a beautiful trade. I could have gone larger on my position sizing, but I am very happy with how this trade worked out. You guys can see right here, this entire trade idea was on Twitter, obviously in the Discord as well. I posted it here on Twitter last night around 8 o'clock. I was very excited for this setup and very convicted in this setup here. I had a lot of conviction looking for downside on Meta. Here was the reasoning, right? I still believed Meta needed a pullback off 316. That supply, I'll go ahead and show you in a second, right? This supply continued to reject. And we continued to see these rejections and we created this bear flag. There's, the zone is the gap fill level, right? This red zone is your gap fill level. We double top there. If you break this bear flag, I believe that you had downside on Meta. This was a fully mapped out trade idea from yesterday into today. A beautiful, beautiful setup. And here is your after fat. Here's your aftermath of the bloodbath that we saw on Meta today. So very clear, right? 314, 316, this supply continued to come in. Rejections here, rejections here. And all we really needed was that catalyst to cause the downside on the market. Now, this is on the hourly time frame, so a little bit of a larger time frame where you can sort of trust that longer term analysis. You can see that bear flag on the hourly chart. We went ahead, we broke it in the after hours, got back into it. And here is where I really started to get into this play. First of all, like I just talked about, it's that pre-market high rejection on the SPY and the S&P 5, the SPY, the QQQ, the NASDAQ futures, everything, right? They all rejected pre-market highs. That was number one, right? I needed to see that happen. When that happened, I had a lot of confirmation. You can see here, when we rejected that pre-market high in the market, Meta also rejected that 314, 316 supply very aggressively. We broke below that bear flag here. Here's the five-minute chart. You can see we broke that bear flag. And from that point, it was pretty much straight down, right? I really don't have much to share here because it really was just a straight down flush move. I'll go ahead and pop up the P&L on the screen for you guys to see. It was all just a larger term idea with the overall market. What set up this trade more than anything? Again, like I said, the pre-market high rejection on the NASDAQ, on the S&P 500. You can start to see why that was so important because everything reacted to that. Every market, to every stock on the market today reacted to that market rejection. If you got into pretty much any tech put using that pre-market high on the QQQ, on the NASDAQ, you likely made money today. That is what ran the market today, and that is why it is so important. I got into Meta because I really love this setup, this supply up here, that bear flag on the hourly chart, right? You can see it once again, and a very clean potential downside. Now, the other reason why I was so interested in meta puts is because of this little area of straight upside, right? And you did get below that today. So you guys can see here on the hourly, you are sitting in a very low volume area here on meta. You probably have more downside here until 300. There is not much support until 300. And something that I always say, right, that I always talk about in the live streams and with the chat is when you get these straight up moves, you will always get the inverse reaction. You will always pull back and retest the breakout point. So right now you can see Meta, previous double top, breakout, you're coming back down to retest that 300. Beautiful bear flag today and an awesome trade to the downside. I have this trade recorded live. I can share it with you. It's really not worth anything because I just enter it and exit it up 300%. 
I can sort of walk through why I took this position. I can share with you that live trade as well. I'll go ahead and do that now. There's really not much value to it, but I figured I'd share it just for you guys to see it. I'm gonna enter a really small, it's a meta 30750 put for 85 cents. And I'm just not even gonna look at it. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm selling anything here. I wanna see this out. The market is really starting to move, so uh, I'm just gonna sit in three Nvidia 460s and one Meta 30750, and I'm just gonna sit 100% on Meta puts, guys. Meta's up 211%. Holy hell, 310% on Meta. Those things are moving like crazy. So the second trade we're going to talk about, which is the larger trade, this was over 100% trade with more size, was NVIDIA downside. Once again, talked about this on Twitter, break it down on the technicals, also in the chat. If you guys saw this and you caught it, well done. I recommend you follow me here on Twitter. Really nice analysis yesterday on Meta and NVIDIA. Both of them worked out beautifully. Here's NVIDIA, right? Very similar setup. We had a triple top at that 480 level on nvidia right here triple top and the buying was slowing up right the buying was drying up up here and we had this bear flag very similar to meta right bear flag into supply right a top level that we couldn't break nvidia we couldn't break 480 bear flag exact same type of setup of course the nasdaq downside gave us the catalyst right and so my first entry today, which was actually a red trade, I lost $500 on my first trade here on NVIDIA. I'll go ahead and break this down on the two-minute chart. My first entry today, I'll go ahead and pop up my timestamps on the screen for you guys to see, and we can sort of walk through them. Here was my first entry, right? My first entry was a rejection of 468. I was watching this 468 level, and I thought, okay, this might be our first rejection point. I'll go ahead and make this red so that we can see right here was my first entry. I'm going to turn this red and I'll sort of break down why I took my puts at 468. So we had a little pop, right? I'm going to zoom in now. You guys can see that was that pre that was that previous day low. So previous day low here at 468. We had a pre-market high at 468. Now, if I zoom into the intraday, we can sort of look at how this was playing out. I'm going to turn this shaded so we can get a good idea of the pre-market and open, All right? So right here, you guys can see we had a quick pop to the upside. We rejected that 468, and I took some puts right here, right? That was my first entry. Now, we had a pop through that level, and we pushed into that 470, which was my ultimate stop. I stopped out here because I wanted to keep that loss relatively small, about $500, and I wanted to wait it out a little bit. At this time, the NASDAQ was still pushing into that pre-market high. I was telling the group I might stay in this to see if this NASDAQ rejects pre-market highs, but I need to have a hard stop at 470, right? It has to end at some point, right? At some point, you have to just accept that the stock is moving against you. This saved me, right? Because NVIDIA could have gone and continued higher. NASDAQ could have broke pre-market highs, right? Who knows? And I could have lost $2,000, $1,500 on this trade. I don't want to be in that situation. I can always get back in and make those, back, don't make those losses back when it starts to look more in my favor. My original plan was for the 468 to reject. It did not. I got stopped out at 470 for about a two-point loss, right? Two points against me. That was my ultimate stop. I had to get out above that level. Now, continuing on, right, and continuing to see the price action, we created this bear flag on the intraday, right? We were sort of pushing higher, and we started to reject that 470. Now, that 470 rejection was at the exact same time that the NASDAQ rejected the pre-market high, right? And when I saw that, my interest was uh, was automatically peaked once again, right? I was automatically interested in reshorting NVIDIA, right? Because we had a NASDAQ pre-market high rejection, we had a 470 rejection, and right here is where I re-entered. This candle, which you guys can see in the timestamps on the screen, this candle was where I re-entered. I re-entered as soon as I saw that original 468 level turn into a rejection again, right? We can see my original entry was at 468. I wanted to see it reject. It did not. I got stopped out for a $500 loss. We got back below my 468 level. This candle right here 
is the moneymaker candle, right? That candle is what should show you and what should give you confirmation for an entry. I'll zoom in a little bit closer on it. Look at how this wick reacted. You tried to get back over 468. You failed it. And this is the exact place I re-entered my puts. We got that beautiful downside. Really nice flush after that. Pretty much just scaled out on the way lower. And you can see on the timestamps, got some off here down at these lows, around $9 per contract. And ultimately just got out, protecting myself from any kind of bounce, right? And just taking my win. The trades were awesome, right? The trades were awesome. That is not the purpose of this video. Let me make that very clear. The purpose of this video is the NASDAQ pre-market high rejection and how important the levels on the futures are in your trading. If there's one thing you take away from today's video, it is that. Watch those futures levels. Either watch my pre-market live stream to get the levels, create those levels yourself, respect those levels, trade off them, and use them to build your game plan every single morning. Those are my trades today. Some really awesome trades. All of these trades called out live in the chat. If you guys were part of them, make sure to comment down below. Congratulations to you guys that took these with me. I'll go ahead and pop up some of you guys in the chat. You deserve some recognition, some really awesome trades. So GG to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, press that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let's end the week strong tomorrow. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.